A couple of weeks ago I realised I've been making landscape photography videos for a year. I've been thinking a lot about what should I expect of myself when I'm making landscape photography videos. What should the content consist of and how does it affect my photography? I'm going to discuss this at the end of the video but for now I hope you enjoy my visit to the coast. I'm out today to spend a couple of hours at the coast to do some landscape photography. It's been a long time since I visited the coast to do any serious photography. And I've just captured my first image. The sun at the moment has went behind some clouds, so it's a little bit darker at the moment. But I captured this uh, scene behind me in some really nice light. I was really drawn to some rocks in the foreground, which I'll show you in just a minute and they were being nicely lit up. They had some nice light and the, the shadows on them as well was just emphasising their shape. Quite difficult to get the tripod into position for this shot. Very easy to get into the correct area handheld, but I need to focus stack because I've got the camera extremely close to my foreground. So I'm taking a shot focusing off in the distance and then another shot in the foreground here. I'm using the polarizer which brought out some detail in the sky and also in the sea itself. And I'm using a three stop uh, soft graduated ND filter just to get the exposure balance correctly. But the rocks in my foreground really caught my attention so I'm trying to emphasize those and I've got the camera very close to them. I'll just grab you and try and show you. So I'm really close to the edge of the rocks here trying to make the shot quite dramatic but it's these rocks here that I'm pointing at you can hopefully just see them if not you'll see them in my image but they're just a really nice shape and some nice curves to them and the lighting coming in from the left was really making them look really nice and then we've got a nice uh, few rocks at the left side of the image as well and leading out into the sea itself so quite pleased with this shot, very challenging to get the tripod set up exactly the way I needed it to get the camera in the correct position and also challenging in terms of the sea spray coming up in my filters as well but in the end I think it's been worth it. One of the challenging things about working at the coast is the ever-changing conditions. The sea changes, compositions that exist one minute are no longer there the next. At the moment I'm rushing along, heading towards the sunset and that is ever-changing as well. So I'm hoping I can find something and hopefully get set up for a nice composition and fingers crossed be rewarded with some good light.
So I apologise in advance if the image quality for the end of this video is not its best. It's got really, really dark now. I'm having to use a high ISO, so the quality may not be its best. It's also quite windy. The tripod here is moving around, so I'm trying to find a bit that's sheltered. But it was quite a struggle to find an image to finish off with. Everything that interested me was pointing straight towards the sun. And earlier on it was impossible to get the shot. There was just too much contrast. I just didn't like the look of how bright the sun was. So I've waited until the sun set. And I've taken an image, but to be honest... As you can see, it was just too dark for the video quality to be any good, so I'm going to finish the video with this voiceover and talk about what it was I was trying to say. I'll also show a few clips from my first year of making videos. I really enjoy myself making all my videos, but at times it can be quite hard work and I'm sure anyone else who makes them can relate to that. One fairly short video of say 8 minutes in length can take a lot of time and effort to produce and that includes hours of image and video editing as well as time and location when the video was actually being recorded. But it's a lot of fun and it's very enjoyable so there are no complaints about that from me. As well as all the work involved, there can sometimes be a bit of pressure which goes with it. I've heard a lot of other video makers or vloggers, as you might say, talk about the pressure they feel, how they struggle to find an image and how often video making can affect their photography. And that's the part I have been thinking about quite a lot. How at times making a video can make my photography suffer a little bit. Not always, but definitely sometimes. Recording what is classically referred to as A-roll and B-roll is time consuming and at times I think most of us must have had a laugh at how we have to retrace our steps to pick up our cameras. Often it means carrying quite a lot of extra gear too. Of course there are different ways of making a video. Some people may put a lot of time and effort into B-roll, others not nearly as much. Some may carry an additional fairly large camera, tripod, microphone and much much more to produce video content. Others may only use something small like a GoPro or similar. Regardless, although some methods are easier and less time consuming than others, making video content definitely takes time. No matter how much you plan or how much time you allow for your video and photography work, I think there will always be a time when the photography suffers due to the video making. If the photography doesn't suffer, then perhaps the video content will because we are so focused on the photography. In the video you just watched, I felt really pushed for time at the end and I felt I didn't have enough time to find a good composition. Sure, I got an okay shot, but had I had more time, I think I could have done better. On this day, the only way I could have had more time was to not record any video and that wasn't something I wanted to do as I really enjoy it. Sometimes I've secured the first shot of the day and with preparation and planning that didn't suffer at all due to making video content. However, I can think of occasions when the next shot has. For example, I've missed some stunning light due to the time spent on video over my first shot. None of what I'm saying is a complaint, nor should it ever be an excuse for poor photography. However, what I think all video makers and photographers would say is that it can be challenging to get the balance right, and often the photography suffers. I don't think we should put too much pressure on ourselves regarding what we achieve when making video content. We all want to take and show portfolio level images in our videos, but I think the reality is that won't always happen. I normally go out and do some landscape photography every week. Let's suppose I want to create and enjoy creating one video per week. I won't always be able to do that, but let's just say I can. Then if I ask myself how often do I capture an image that I am really really pleased with and would be happy to say it's a good example of my work. I think capturing one such image every 6 or 7 weeks would be a good result for me, especially considering I am not travelling the world to the best locations. So that means in only one of 6 or 7 videos will I show an image that I am really really proud of. But I think that's okay, as long as my video is interesting, entertaining and contains some value. 
If I went out each week on a dedicated photography trip with no video recording, I do think my photography success rate would be slightly higher simply due to the fact video making gets in the way sometimes. So to sum up, I think we need to be realistic. Even without creating and showing video content, photographers are quite critical of their own work, and often we only get a small number of images each year we are really excited about. Often though, we go out each week to take images, even when we know there is zero chance of getting a portfolio image. We do this through the pure love of photography, or to scout a location, to practice, or just for enjoyment. I think it shows the realistic side of photography to create video and record these times because that's just how photography goes. The great images don't get captured every week. They depend on so many things, one of which is the weather, and we all know how fickle it can be. And those are my words of wisdom after one year of producing mainly landscape photography videos. It's a wonderful experience, but like most things it has its positives and negatives. I've had a great first year and I look forward to the next one. I hope you found this interesting and as always thanks so much for watching my content and I'll see you in the next one.